Hey guys, what's going on? I love it when I come up with ideas for quick tips, mainly because of course it makes for an easier video, but also it's a good way to teach you guys something that I do that makes my life building quads a whole lot easier. Um, the one thing that I do, uh, so this is uh, the shrink tubing that I normally use. Uh, it's one to one ratio. It's the most common stuff. So if you go to Fry's or other electronic stores, one to one is what it's most common. Of course, you can go out online and find two to one, three to one, four to one, even five to one, I believe. Shrink tubing so that you can start with a larger size and then shrink down to a smaller size. The only downside of doing that is that when you shrink a lot, the walls get a lot thicker. So sometimes for electronics such as ESCs, if you want to get shrink tubing past a capacitor, for example, in this case, um, and you use something like a two to one or three to one ratio um, shrink tubing, it, it'll be easy to do, but the problem is you end up with a thick wall of plastic around your ESC, which is not good for cooling. So in some cases using like for antennas, if you want to protect an antenna or something like that, it's fine to use a higher ratio um, shrink tubing. For this, not so much. So what I like to do is twofold. It actually helps with the thickness of the shrink tubing, which helps with cooling, and it also allows you to get small shrink tubing into a large area like this. So what I do is like to have different sizes of needle nose pliers, such as, and then if we try and get this in here, you'll realize that there's no way you're gonna get past the capacitor. So what I like to do is work my way through this, stretching it out. So I just feed the needle nose pliers in. And I go from the outside. You have to work your way into it kind of slowly because if you pull too hard on it in one shot, you're gonna rip it. Also keep in mind that this one-to-one -one shrink tubing, uh, it's okay with doing this. The two-to-one, three-to-one, and so on and so forth, shrink tubing is a lot more brittle for some reason. And when you pull on it it's like this, it immediately rips. And of course, it's gonna depend on the brand and whatnot. You can do it with the really, really clear stuff that comes with like the TBS VD VTXs, for example. But this stuff is really rubbery and you can just keep stretching it until you get it to the size you need. Every once in a while, I'll have one rip, but for the most part, if you work on it, you can easily stretch it to the diameter that you need. Now keep in mind when you do this, it'll actually shrink this way. As you pull on it, it'll shrink this way. So it'll appear too short at first, but now that it's about twice the size, we stick it back in there, past the capacitor, and now see how it, how, how it looks kind of short. There we go. So it, I want it to be longer, but as soon as you start heating it up, it, it stretches back out. So it shrinks and then stretches back out. Check it out. All right, see, so there you have it. As you can see, it's, stop following my face. There you go. So I'll do this mostly for ESCs, but I mean, I've done it for VTXs as well and other things that are, get hot. So that you actually want thin walled shrink tubing. So starting off with something smaller and stretching it out and then shrinking it all the way down, it's almost like making an artificial two to one um, shrink tubing of you, if you may. So that's it. Quick tip for something that you could easily do on your bench. The nice thing about it is that you can also stock less sizes of shrink tubing in your stockpile there of tools so that um, if you find out yeah, you need something that's actually bigger than what you have, you can easily stretch it. So, um, all right guys, quick tip. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, thumbs up. I'll see you in the next video.